Delighted to say we've got the F2 freestylers in studio with us this morning. F2 Ultimate Footballer is their brand new book. Lads, you're very welcome. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. Us, yeah. Just reading through this, there's a lot of debates throughout the book. Did you come up with the Ultimate Footballer in the end? Because for people who haven't read the book, there's different attributes, different parts of a footballer that you put together. But if you had to pick one Ultimate Footballer that would sum up the entire thing, what would you go for? Who would you go for? Well, well this is the debate. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we got asked this before and... Bill come up with a good one, to be fair. It's controversial. We, 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 that's the good thing about this book, is there's so many really brilliant debates. Mm. Um, and your answer was Van Dijk, wasn't it? For like the ultimate well, I'm just current saying, day. Yeah, our ultimate footballer, you look at Van Dijk as a footballer, what can, can't he do? He can do the lot. And um, I know that you look at Ronaldo as well. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking Ronaldo, but then when Bill pulled out Van Dijk, I was thinking, if you put Van Dijk up front, could he do a job for you? And you know he could. Of course he could. I think yeah. it's a great shout. But if yeah. you put Cristiano at centre-back, would he be as effective as a centre-back as Van Dijk is as a striker? Debatable. The answer is no, actually, yeah. I think. Yeah, the answer yeah. is no. You change your tactics yeah. and you go route one and Van Dijk is amazing. Even along, even along the ground, he's going to be OK. Yeah. But there are going to be weaknesses. If you're coming up against Cristiano Ronaldo as a centre-half, there's going to yeah. be a few weaknesses. So I think that's a good shout. If I was going to ask you to pick an attacker and put him in the heart of the defence or anywhere across the defence, who are you picking in that regard? Oh, what a great question. So, any striker in the world, you've got to stick Cur him current. at centre-back. Current. Let's go current. Oh, who's going to do the best job back there? Because, like, is Cristiano that guy, as you mentioned? I'm, I'm not sure he is. Now, this is something I hadn't even considered before asking, so... He's a bit silky. You need one who, who tracks back and loves to get stuck in. I'm not thinking Lukaku, maybe. Hmm. Is his, yeah. reading, is his reading of the game good enough? That's what I was going to question. Do you know who I would pick? And he's current, but not really because he's on his way out in terms of career. But Wayne Rooney would be a class defender. Reads the game perfectly, can tackle. He's got the complete package. Well, that's just cheating, isn't it? You've picked a player <laughs> who's dipped back into centre mid in the twilight years of his career. Yeah, in, he's halfway yeah, there, Bill. Yeah, okay, he's halfway right, there. Yeah, he's already, OK, all right, <laughs> let me pick someone. Well, he, he would need a good defender to, to have his back. I mean, the, yeah. first, the person who's got us back the most, obviously, is Colleen, but uh, we, won't, we won't go down that yeah. uh, wormhole today, will we? <laughs> I'm trying to think who I'd choose. Lukaku is a OK one. Zlatan? He doesn't defend, though, does he? He's, he's, he's Zlatan like, does. Like, if, don't tell Zlatan he don't defend. Well... <laughs> This, this is just going to be another wormhole that, that we end up. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll accept Wayne Rooney, I'll accept Wayne Rooney <laughs> okay, as our answer good, here. Good. Uh, for anybody who's just joining us, we've got the F2 Ultimate Footballer. Uh, it's a brand new book. We've got the F2 Freestylers in studio with us. Everybody will have watched your videos in some description. We'll have some people who are fanatics, some people who follow you religiously, and some people who are like, oh yeah, they're the two guys that I see sometimes on Instagram. Tell us your story. How does this happen? <laughs> how, how do you become uh, two of the most famous football faces? on the planet, because I think that's what you are, it's fair to say. Wow, sure. thank you. First of all, it's a pleasure to be here. I thought you were going to say, and there's some people that just think, who are these two annoying guys that keep popping up on my feed? Yeah. But you went uh, nice. Am I one of the two, or...? No, you went <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, so what was the question again? How does this happen for you? How, yeah. how, how does it arrive where you've got multiple books, where you've got yeah. millions of followers, 6.5 million fo followers on Instagram at the moment? Mm -hmm. uh, like, I was looking at the, the YouTube statistics recently. You're making more cash off YouTube than Liverpool FC are making off YouTube, uh, which is an incredible statistic, really. So, like, for, for, for two guys, is, is that the reason why it has been successful, where people are getting straight to content rather than actually having to go through the, the portal of Liverpool FC or Manchester United or whatever it may be. Yeah, I, th I think it's been an incredible journey for us. Um, this, this, our journey started years ago before YouTube as freestylers, as performers, and uh, we've evolved and adapted. And then when YouTube came about, we thought it's great to put our content on there because it can get seen by anyone at any moment. Whereas our live shows, are, we're only performing in front of the people that are in front of us or occasionally it might be televised. Um, so we went into YouTube as a hobby and as a way of getting recognised for our performances. And um, we had to graft to get to where we are today. It took two years of uploading without any recognition. Not great views, not great engagement. Um, but, and this is a, a good indication, if you want to become a YouTuber, it's not going to just fall into your lap and be easy, especially now but well, there's billions of people trying to do the same thing. Mm. Yeah. Um, you have to work hard and you have to stick with what you think is right and go through 
a long period of time until people start gaining trust in your confidence and word spreads and you might have a couple of virals. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess with regards to the Liverpool thing about us earning more money or getting more views or subscribers in them, I think YouTube's a very personal platform. You know, people go there because they want to relate to someone and get to know and connect with them. It's really hard to connect with a football club in general. Mm. You know, that's why they're using their players more and more now. And their players want YouTube channels themselves. So I guess that's the reason why. But for us, it's like a hobby turned into a job. Yeah, for sure. Like, at what point do you realise that this is going to be something that you're actually amazing at, that people are actually watching you for this brilliant tricks that you're doing, for the freestyling that you're doing, for actually collaborating with professional footballers? Like, is, is there a stage, all, were you always at that level in your life where you're like, I'm pretty good at this? If there's another YouTube, another YouTube channel down the road who's trying to do what I'm doing, well, at least I'm better than them, because it's quality, ultimately, at the end of the day, what people are coming for. Yeah, I mean, it moves so fast, and to stay at the top, you have to always be trying to evolve and improve so we probably spend more time focusing on what we can do better mm. than than thinking about how good we are we obviously know we're, we're reasonably good at our jobs or we wouldn't be where we are but we do that's just the way we are we, we do look at where where can we improve and um that's probably why we've man managed to maintain success for, for so many years but there is a lot of um there's a lot of strategy and a lot of formula to what we do. It's not by chance. Um, when we film with players, for example, there's a lot of thought and planning that goes into how can we maximise this seven minutes and 20 seconds that we were contracted to have with Cristiano Ronaldo to, to convert that into the maximum amount of millions of views. Mm. And there is a lot of strategy and experience that we put into that. And we've kind of become good at delivering for that. And that's that's probably why so many brands do use us and we become consistent at generating high views. But it's through learning from mistakes as well. Of course. We, have, we have put out videos before that we thought they're going to do really well and they've done terribly. So we've learned a lot over the years. Was there ever a football career for either of you two on the cards? Was it, did you, were you involved in academies? Did, 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 yeah. how, how, how far did you get? And, and we both could, could have gone down the football route mm. and probably well we definitely could have been a professional at some standard whether it wouldn't be might not have been Premier League but we were playing top tier well I was playing top tier semi-pro football and uh, at 17 years old and I decided to stop it to go into the freestyle and the way I, I come out of Tottenham Academy Jez was at Arsenal Academy mm. and the way I kind of analysed it was I thought I was much closer to being the best in the world at freestyle than I was being the best in the world at football. And I knew that at 17, if you're not already in that system and playing pro football, people do get steps up. Um, but let's say you go up two leagues and you, or a league and you're playing pro. What happens after you finish your career? Because let's face it, the money you get from playing pro in what division Div 2 um, at the time wouldn't get you wouldn't it be enough to enable you to retire healthily. You still sure. have to go and get a job. Of course. Whereas freestyle was totally new and people were popping up saying, here's a few hundred quid to come and perform at a birthday party. Just like really small jobs, but for what was big money at the time. Right. You know, you earn £350 playing semi-pro football, you're getting that from a show. So it's, to be the best at something, you have to put your, all your heart into it. And playing football and freestyling there was too much of a divide because mm. you'd be tired from f from football and you wouldn't be able to train. So that's why we kind of we went into freestyle. And it was the same for you as well, weren't it, Jez? Pretty much. Well, for me, I got injured. You know, I was semi-pro. Oh, don't <laughs> use that one. I did actually get injured, but I don't know, I'm too embarrassed to say. No, it. I'm joking. That's, that's the old <laughs> chest yeah. There's So many guys in there. Oh, Could have been pro if money didn't go. Pro, mate. I would have made it. Got injured. Yeah. <laughs> Like that, it's, yeah. it's, it's an interesting. Oh, I'd yeah. crush it, mate. Like what? Are, what? Are, <laughs> that ain't what happened to you, is it? Oh. Uh, yes, no, one hundred percent. I was destined to actually become the best freestyler in the world. I, I, I had like millions and millions of, of wannabe Instagram followers. <laughs> then you know, just uh, drink, got a cough one day, and that was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, talk to me, like just to, to, to get serious for a sec. The academy structure is something that is critiqued so heavily all across. Uh, England, I think it's fair to say, like without putting too much of a pin in it, uh, Premier League academies, uh, they've been criticised left, right and centre, they produce the best of the best uh, if you are Phil Foden, if you are going to be that absolute world-class talent. 
What about the, the talents that aren't going to make it that level? In your opinion, from what you've seen, how are those talents treated? How are they made to succeed at the, the tier below the Arsenal's and the Tottenham Hotspur's? It's tough. I'll tell you why it's tough, because you fall out of a pro club, premiership team, and you get released, you drop down the leagues, and it's a different style of football. Mm. And you have to adapt, and you have to... And you, you might drop down to these teams in the championship or wherever it may be, and people think you come in with a bit of an ego because you've been at a, a higher club. So, you, so sometimes there's, there's other players that are envious of the fact you've been in that setup and you've been there and done that. So they don't want to welcome you. I remember playing for, uh, top, like the top tier of semi-pro football and we had a player that got released from Arsenal to come and play for us and he weren't welcome. Right. Because the rest of the lads were jealous that he wasn't in a, in a system. Like he, he, we, we would love to be in that position, go through the youths, get released and then come and play for, for our team. But he wasn't, he wasn't welcome at the club because wow. of that, which is really not a good thing at all. So there's a different aspect of looking at it. So it is difficult for the guys. It is really difficult. They've got to adapt to what the, the, the style of training they've had, the, the level of um, intensity, the te technicality of the drills and, and what they've been taught. And they step down is totally different, so it is difficult for them. Mm. What do you think? I think the same thing. I do agree with that. Um, I think a lot of clubs are just run as businesses exactly. behind the scenes, and it's 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 a hard thing for a lot of fans to sort of uh, want to acknowledge in any way. But the 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 reality of a lot of clubs behind the scenes is they do run them very as very stringent businesses and players are just numbers to a lot of clubs and uh, in England I think English players are they do they are worth slightly more than, than mm. foreign players at a lot of clubs so maybe they're a slight advantage in some in some ways but then in other ways will they be wanting wanted to just like the way academies run a lot of them it's like they're looking for that one player, right? That they can make the money. That's what it is. So they'll, they'll waste their resources on 200 players as long as they get one. As long as they get one, they yeah. make their money back. Mm. And, it, and it doesn't matter if you have a successful youth team that win the youth FA Cup or they're winning the league, they're dominating. It doesn't matter. The clubs identify that one. Uh, Arsenal at the time, it was, say, Jack Wilshere. Mm. The rest of the guys didn't matter. They knew they've got that one player that's going to yeah. go to a £50 million pound value or yeah. whatever it may be. So it's about finding that gem. And do they care about the rest of the guys? at that moment or... Care what, is what, it how you what, interpret what, what, what they do, yeah. they do, and, and they hope they transform or develop... Into another into, Yeah, into another... But, okay. like, you can see from a young age, like, players that are destined to be international superstars. Um, look, look at Messi, for instance. Look at Ronaldo. They, they're scouted from Barcelona from, like, that day one Messi was, and they, and they knew that he is going to be something special. So you have your, your special key players, and, and the other players that are good or, or, or doing well in the system, them, you hope they develop and they come on mm. and they produce good for you um, yeah. and sometimes it works that way and sometimes it works the other way you know they, they're better when they're younger and the more they, they do it yeah. it's, it's a harsh reality again but I think managing young players expectations is a really key key thing and statistically most people aren't gonna make it mm. as long as they're aware of, of the ratio of people that make it and people that drop off or don't quite get there then they know what they're getting themselves into. But you do see a lot of young players who, in their minds, they're all in with football. But yeah. this is a tough one. This is a tough one because... I know. To, to, to make it, there, you, you have, have to, to have that mentality. You are the best. I know. I'm the best on the pitch. I'm ruthless. Um, and it may come across as arrogant, yeah. but it's not. It's, it's, a, it's a sureness and a confidence that you are going to be the best player and you're going to make it. Yeah. And when we film with pro players, we notice these attributes. We yeah. see that... They're so confident. They they think that like even if they're not the best in the team, and you ask them, they'll say, "Yeah, I'm the best in the team." Yeah. yeah. But they believe it. They actually physically believe it. So it's a tricky one. Do you do, <laughs> do you uh, nurture that necessary self confidence and self belief, or warn them of what's going to come? Or do yeah. you? Yeah. You don't want to scare them, and you want them to yeah. focus. That they're fully on football. Well, it's interesting you say this because it is actually covered in the book. This isn't just some random thing that we're talking about. And it's a couple of pages, like F2 Ultimate Footballer, there's brilliant stuff in terms of 
the, the breakdown of different skills. Brilliant drills for anybody out there as well who wants to, to brush up on their skills. But I am just going to finish on the, the, the element about F2 Talent. Uh, that, that is the, the name yeah. of your organisation. And it kind of ties in perfectly with this. So yeah. I, I didn't know this. Yeah, you guys are involved with Rian Brewster. You're, you're as representatives, or does he have other agents as well? Or, or how does that work? That's right. We've recruited a team of people. Um, Rian's um, on board with us. And we have someone that manages Rian. He's well connected with Rian already. Um, we're there to support um, from more of a social media aspect, um, purely because we understand the importance of um, how you portray yourself off the pitch and what that can do for you in terms of fans getting behind you, wanting you wanting to do well, a positive image, positive role model. And these players these days, they are a business and you see a lot of young players that aren't guided in the right way and end up saying things that the club don't like, that fans don't like. and. Um, so there's a responsibility on their shoulders now, and we've obviously built up the F2 on social media. Um, we like to think we do things right, and we're positive, and we're role models, and, um, and we can help the younger generation of players coming through with that support as well. So we've got a team of, of guys that are intermediaries that run the, the football. We don't get involved in the contracts and that kind of things. We just give them support um, as they need it with what we can offer best. Mm. And when it comes to potential future Brewster, is, it, is, is that something you're cu currently on the lookout? Is it something that you're focusing on or are you just focusing on Rianne at the moment and then hoping that his career flourishes and blossoms and see where it goes from there? Yeah, we're hoping that Rianne flourishes and blossoms. He's doing really well. He's scoring goals every week. Um, but we've, this year, to be honest, we've decided to focus, to really home in on creating the best possible content we can because mm. that's the foundation of, of all of our businesses. So this year, our personal time is going mostly on creating as unbelievable content as we possibly can. Um, the nice thing about with the agency stuff is notice that a lot of uh, right. young players or players in general, when they do something good, it's just like human nature. You want to share it a lot of times. And, and there's a lot of agencies that couldn't offer what we could offer in terms of if you do something amazing, we can let the whole football world know about yeah, it. Yeah, it's true. Just one post, bang, and everyone knows what you did. Yeah, an example of that, we filmed with the Barcelona under 17s keeper, um, and he wasn't getting in the, the team, and then he got a move to, where was it? Valencia? Valencia, off the back of that video. Mm -hmm. That's how they. That's spot, extraordinary. They, they gave him a trial off the back of the video. Incredible. Yeah, th th this ain't window dressing anymore. This is a, a very kind of uh, yeah. material part of how players are moving yeah, and how yeah. things are moving. Yeah. Uh, guys, it's been great uh, catching up with you. W one last request. Can you please just, w w no matter how big your network grows, stop the thanks for the support, lads. Great support, Twitter posts. Um, come up with something more original for people on social media. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> listen, FT Ultimate Footballer, it's out now. Uh, thanks a million, lads. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.